Hey guys, in this lesson you will learn about the nemathelminthes. They can also be called as eschelminthes. So the term nemathelminthes or eschelminthes it means round worms. So Gorgonbor he built this phylum called nemathelminthes and when we talk about their habitat we see that they can be found everywhere right from sea water or fresh water maybe in the soil or as parasites in animals as well as in plants. Now talking about their general characteristic we see that they have bilateral symmetry. It is very much same as platyhelminthes. The only difference in the name or in some of the characters that platyhelminthes are flat whereas ascalminthes they are round. So here we see that they are also triploblastic and they also have organ grade of level of organization. Next when we talk about their body, we first see their body wall. So the body wall it consists of three layers which we call as cuticle, the outermost one. Then the epidermis which is again syncytial meaning that they have n number of nucleus. Okay, they have multiple number of nucleus in their cell. And the last is muscle layer. One distinguishing feature about these nemathelminthes is their body cavity. As their body cavity is called pseudo -cele. So till platyhelminthes we had seen that the organisms were acelomate. Here the organisms are pseudo -celomate. What is the meaning of pseudo -celomate? Well, pseudo meaning false and coelomate means the body cavity. So when you look at the structure, you see that although it appears that there is a body cavity, but it is a false body cavity as this cavity is not lined by the mesodermal cells. So like we have discussed, these organisms are triploblastic meaning that they have three layers, the ecto, meso and endoderm, but here to have a true coelom, the coelom has to have the lining of mesodermal layer. But it is not so in case of Inimat helminthes and hence we can call it pseudo coelomate or this coelom is called as pseudo coelom. Next when we talk about the digestion, we see that in them the digestive tract is complete. It means now it has everything right from the mouth till the anus. Moving forward we see the respiration. So in respiration we see that the respiration occurs as a simple diffusion with the help of the body surface. Coming next to the excretion, again important. The excretion, it is the excretory system, it is an H like structure which is formed by the excretory tubes or by the protonephridia. Alright, the excretory material or the excretory substance in such organisms is again ammonia. Next coming to the reproduction. In reproduction we see that these organisms they show sexual dimorphism. So sexes are separate. If we look at a male in this structure we can see that the males they are small and they have a curved tail like structure. So their caudal region is curved whereas the females are comparatively longer and they are straight in structure. Next when we talk about the fertilization, the fertilization is internal, it is not external. Then development, so development can be indirect or direct. So in some anorganisms you can see that the uh, development is having a larval stage in between but in some the larval stage may be absent. The last part which is the nervous system, here we see that in nervous system a ring, a nerve ring is present which can be called as the reduced brain and nerve cord is present. So this is some of the characteristic which we have seen in nemathelminthes wherein we have observed that these organisms are now modern organisms we can say. So they have bilateral symmetry, they have triploblastic germ layers and organ grade. So moving forward these will evolve and they will form the organ system. So till now these are having the organ grade level. Next when we talk about their body, we had seen that their body wall itself is divided into three layers. They have a coelom which is a distinguishing features of these animals which is that the coelom is pseudo -celome. When we talk about the digestion, respiration and excretion, we do not see any such you know distinguishing feature but we see that these are the animals in which the first time the digestive tract is complete. Now both the mouth and anus is present. Coming to the reproduction, we see that two types of organisms are found, male and female, in which we have seen the males are short and they have a curved tail like structure, whereas the females are straight and long. 
Fertilization, it is internal and the development can be direct or indirect. The nervous system is also developing as we are seeing and they have a nerve ring and some nerve cords. Moving forward, let's have a look at some of the examples of this phylum. So you see that these are some of the examples of nematelminthes in which the first which is Ascaris is called as intestinal worm. Next we see Enterobius. Enterobius is called as a pinworm. Next is Encylostoma. This is called as a hook worm. Which area? Very very important for you to remember as this is carried by a vector called mosquito, Culex mosquito and it causes a disease which is called as elephantiasis. Next we see Loa Loa which is called as eye worm, Trichuris. This Trichuris is called as a whip worm. It is also found in intestine and the last example is Ribditis. So this was about the Eschelminthes or Nimat helminth.